Matthew 16, verses 24 through 27. Then Jesus said to his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his works. <coughs> An appointment with God. An appointment with God. <laughs> Our Cuban brothers and sisters are extremely familiar with a man named <coughs> Castro. <coughs> Fidel Castro was a Marxist, Leninist, who ruled Cuba as a communist with an iron fist. He has been guilty of multiple human rights abuses throughout his reign. And perhaps For well, the people of Cuba, his death may serve as a source of hope for that nation and even for those who have fled that nation. You know, it's a sad testimony that many in the media today are almost trying to make a hero out of Fidel Castro. Fidel Castro was a despot dictator. He came into power, he outlawed freedom of speech. He outlawed freedom of the press. and put a stranglehold on religion. He forced many into re-education camps. He had multiple women over the years who were delivered to his office daily for sexual encounters, some have estimated as many as 35,000 different women. Wow. We're talking about a man who treated the people so horribly that over a million people fled Cuba Come to the United States. I'm going to start again. I'm going to start over. Because Pastor Raphael just came in and I want him to hear this. And he's familiar with the fact that many Cuban Americans were elated yesterday. Dancing in the streets of Miami because of Fidel Castro's death, a Marxist-Leninist who ruled over Cuba as a communist. Guilty of human rights abuses throughout his reign and perhaps for our Cuban-American brothers and sisters 
is in Christ, his death serves them as a source of hope now for the people of Cuba and even for those who have fled the nation. He was a despot dictator who outlawed again freedom of speech, freedom of the press, freedom of religion, forced many into re-education camps. Again, a man who treated people so horribly that over a million people fled that country. Many of them risking their lives and many of them dying in an attempt to escape his wicked rule. A wicked man Fidel Castro, despite what we're hearing on American media and even from many of our leaders today, Fidel Castro was a wicked man who left behind a legacy of firing squads, theft, unimaginable suffering, poverty, and a denial of fundamental human rights. One of our Cuban American congressmen said of Fidel Castro, this is a man who leaves behind a legacy of intolerance, setting up a family-run dictatorship, which had no tolerance for anyone who thought differently, who set up a vicious totalitarian regime where people were persecuted for the most slight deviation from official ideology. See, if you didn't agree with him, he just shot you. He didn't take you to court to find you good, he just shot you. Perhaps that's why many Cuban Americans were dancing and rejoicing in the streets of Miami yesterday. Amen. Amen. But you know the sad reality of it is? America herself may have in our recent election avoided a progressive regime that was headed in the same direction. Amen. Thank God the American people rejected it and now there's some liberals who are doing everything they can to overthrow and overturn that election. Thank God, many of our Cuban-American brothers and sisters voted against what they themselves saw happening in our nation. They were very much partly responsible for winning the presidential election in the state of Florida. Hallelujah. Many of them, many of them saw the same thing progressively happening in America that happened in Cuba. They were watching in America what they saw happen to their own nation. While many Americans were totally blind to it. Still on. And so they have a justifiable reason for rejoicing at his departure. A man who rejected and denied the God of this book. Ted Cruz, speaking on the death of Castro, said this. Fidel Castro's death 
cannot bring back his thousands of victims, nor can it bring comfort to their families. Unquote. Amen. Inspired by the Spirit of God, the author of Hebrews penned these words, It is appointed unto man once to die. And then the judgment. Fidel Castro knows that there's a God in heaven today. A sad commentary. A sad commentary coming from the lips of our own president yesterday. Barack Obama said, speaking of the death of Castro... History will be Castro's final judge, unquote. I say to Barack Obama, my friend, God is history. God is history and God will be the final judge of Fidel Castro as he will every other human. Thank God for Marco Rubio. Amen. Amen. Marco Rubio actually had the boldness and the courage to rebuke Barack Obama by saying this. President Obama issued a pathetic statement on the death of Fidel Castro with no mention of the thousands he killed and imprisoned. Unquote. Time. Time has already told what Fidel Castro wrought. And it's anything but the divine favor and pleasure of God. I don't think God looked favorably upon Fidel Castro. I want you to get this point today. <clears throat> All men will one day give an account for the years that God gives them. Amen. Praise God. All men will one day give an account for the years that God gives them. And the first thing we need to understand is this. Only those with Christ will be able to withstand the day of judgment. Amen. Only those with Christ will withstand the day of God's judgment. You see, Jesus Christ has called upon all men to come after Him. To follow Him and following Christ, Jesus says, requires a denial of self. That means we don't get to do things our own way. We don't get to move forward with our own desires, our own ambitions, and our own drives. No, to come after Him requires us to follow the path that God places before us, the place that He Himself has already gone before us and traveled for us. You see, the final destiny of Jesus Christ was the cross. The cross was His focus. The cross was his purpose. The cross was the very reason for which he came. Jesus didn't come to make a name for himself. He came to make a way for us. Amen. He is the way. Amen. The truth. And the like. And so Jesus came to offer man life. Jesus didn't come to oppress man. Jesus didn't come.
come to enslave man. No, Jesus came to set free those who were enslaved by sin. Jesus said it is Satan who comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And I would say to you this morning, that was the role that Fidel Castro played. He was inspired by the devil. A murderer. A murderer who stole and destroyed the lives of people. He was certainly no follower of Christ. And he will face the judgment of God. Only those with Christ will be able to withstand the day of judgment. All men, every man, will one day give an account for the years that God gave them. Second thing we see here is this. Those who deny Jesus Christ will lose it all. Those who deny Christ will lose it all. Jesus came to save man from his sin. And without him, man is nothing. Without Christ, man is good for nothing. He is worthless and useless. Without Christ, a man is vile. He is wicked, and as we all know, some are more vile and wicked than others. Amen. Yet the Word of God says that all men are born into this world with sinful hearts. God's Word says all have sinned and the wages of sin is death. In His holiness, See, we hear today, God is love, God is love, God is love. Yes, God is love. God is also holy. And because God is holy, God must and He will judge sin. He will judge wicked men. Those who deny Christ must pay for their own sins. Those who deny Christ must suffer from the consequences. The one who blessed them with the very breath of life itself, the author of life, whom they have rejected, whom they have refused, the Bible says, such people are without excuse. And they die in their own web of self-deceit and appeasement. Some ten years ago, the net worth of Fidel Castro, I understand, was around $900 million. $900 million. How did he get it? He sold his soul for it. He stole it. He robbed people for it. He pillaged a nation full of people and he even murdered for it. He oppressed the people and he took from them the fruit of their labors and made himself a wealthy man. But I ask you this morning, what did it profit? What did it profit? Nine hundred million dollars. That's a lot of money, folks. Nine hundred million dollars will provide a man with anything this world has to offer. Think about it. 
today his 900 million is gone. It's been exchanged for his soul. Now he finds himself eternally lost, awaiting the second and final death. What shall it profit a man if he gain the whole world and lose his soul? Those who deny Jesus Christ will lose it all. All men will one day give an account for every year that God gives them. Last this morning, Jesus says that all men will be rewarded according to their work. Understand that there are different degrees of punishment in the abyss of eternity. Those who die without Jesus Christ will find themselves individually punished. According to their works throughout their entire lives. Think about that. Every deed, every thought, every act, every sin, every work is recorded. Jesus said, for there is nothing here that shall not be manifested. Neither was anything kept secret that it should come abroad. No man is getting away with anything, folks. Amen. All the wickedness of the lost on judgment day will be exposed. Think about that. Fidel Castro lived to be 90 years old. Listen, 90 years of existence is a long, long time to account for and to answer to God. Each lost man's punishment in hell will be commensurate with his works throughout the numbers of his years. I wonder if he got his $900 million one. That's the bad news for the lost. That's good news for the saved. Because not only will the wicked be rewarded or punished for their evil deeds and their evil works, but the Bible says that there will be degrees of glory rewarded and passed out for the same. escaping the judgment of the lost is to be saved by the grace of God. Amen. By trusting in the Lord Jesus Christ by faith. All of the lost will find their eternal home in the lake of fire. The degree of their punishment will match the degree of their wickedness. Only those who have faith in Christ 
will escape the great white throne judgment of God. We know Christ, we escape that judgment. Never to be judged for our sins. Why? Because Christ took our sins upon himself on the cross. However, even as Christians, the Bible says that we must all stand before the judgment seat of Christ to be rewarded according to our works. We will be rewarded in glory for our works. You go out the other night. Linda, Miss Dean and I went out and over Cape Canaveral they were launching a weather satellite. And the sky was clear the stars were shining, and we watched that weather satellite as it went off out in space. Bright light. But if you looked around, you also saw stars. Some of those stars shine brighter than others. Some of those stars had more glory than others. They all had their place in space. Yet some shine brighter than others. Some, all of us who are saved will have our place in heaven. We have our home reserved in heaven. And yet we will all be rewarded according to our faithfulness, the word of God says. That means to me that in heaven some will shine brighter than others. Our eternal brightness, our eternal glory will be commensurate with the faithfulness by which we serve God in the years that it has given each of us. All men will be rewarded according to their individual works, whether they be lost men or whether they be saved men. I'm glad I know Christ this morning. Amen. Amen. I'm glad I have a home reserved in the land of the living. Hallelujah. Amen. All men will one day give an account for the years that God has given them. You know, when I came back to Christ, I had wasted 10 years. I'd thrown 10 years of my life right down the drain. I had a lot of making up to do. A lot of growing to do. A lot of maturing to do. Thank God for His grace. His mercy. His forgiveness. Amen. He's all of those things, isn't He? Thank God that even now when we sin, we're able to go before Him and confess our sins and not only be forgiven, but be washed, be cleansed. Be reunited with him in fellowship. Hallelujah. Able to enjoy his peace that passes all understanding. Able to experience that deep-seated joy that bubbles up from deep within. We're even able to experience on occasions that blessed, precious righteousness of Christ that resides within us. Amen. Thank God for what Jesus Christ did for us on the cross of Calvary. Amen. Paul said you and I are going to be living in a day where wicked men are going to wax worse and worse. Mm -hmm. Deceiving and being deceived. But you and I, we have to keep right on pressing forward. 
We have to move on forward. God's called us for a purpose. He's given us a purpose. No matter what the world does, folks, you and I have to do what God's called us to do. You and I have to show forth our unwavering faithfulness to Christ and to the Word of God. Don't expect the world to appreciate it. Don't expect the world to pat you on the back. No, no, no. <laughs> to follow Christ means we're going to be an offense to the world. And the darker the world gets, the brighter we're going to shine. And the brighter we shine, the more it hurts their eyes. I believe Jesus Christ is coming back soon. Amen. I began to pray. Come on, Lord. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Don't you long for that day? Amen. Jesus has promised that he's coming back and he's coming again. If you're not here this morning, I look around, I'm sure. I hope everybody here knows Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. If you're here, and that's not the case. I'd love to pray with you, pray for you. You need prayer for any reason this morning. I don't care what it is. As we sing this closing hymn, you come, let me pray with you and pray for you.